there's some myth busting in the wake of the Supreme Court's overturning of the federal right to abortion. The first myth, only people with unplanned pregnancies who want to terminate them are being affected by this Supreme Court decision. Abortion providers who are leaving states with bans are taking with them expertise in handling high-risk pregnancies, routine deliveries, and screening and treatment for cancer and STDs. People with autoimmune disorders and cancer are also reporting difficulty accessing methotrexate, a drug that's used for those ailments that can also be used to end a pregnancy. And some people are struggling with access to birth control in the morning after pill. That leads to another myth, that Plan B, the morning after pill, is the same as mifepristone, the abortion pill. Plan B is a high dose of regular birth control that prevents ovulation, but does not interrupt an existing pregnancy. The abortion pill is usually a combination of medications that can usually end a pregnancy safely until the 10th week after a missed menstrual period. A final myth, the Democratic Congress could have codified abortion rights when it had larger majorities, but it chose not to. But even though Democrats had larger majorities under President Clinton in the 1990s and President Obama in the 2010s, many of those Democrats did not support abortion. That meant there was not a majority for most abortion rights legislation. In fact, the first House majority that fully supported abortion rights was in 2019 when President Trump was still president. It wasn't for lack of trying. In 1992, leaders of both houses tried to push for the Freedom of Choice Act, a bill that would have codified the rights in Roe v. Wade, but there were not the votes in either chamber. But even if legislation could get through the House now, it would still need 60 votes in the Senate, or the Senate would have to vote to get rid of its filibuster.